One of the most important choices you will make in a Borderlands game is picking your Vault Hunter. We're happy to inform you that we think every Vault Hunter in Borderlands 3 is a ton of fun, and you can't really go wrong with any of them. That said, they are designed differently around specific playstyles. In this video, we're going to give you an overview of each character so you can pick which Vault Hunter is right for you. Let's start with Amara. If you liked playing as Brick in Borderlands or Krieg in Borderlands 2, you'll most likely enjoy Amara as she's basically the siren equivalent of those two put together. Though she does come with some support and defensive abilities, Amara is almost entirely offense-based and at her best when she's in the middle of a fight, punching bandits with her fists, and crushing soldiers with her elemental arms. If you want to be aggressive, like, all the time, then you want to pick Amara. Each of Amara's three active skills are designed to get her into an opponent's face as quickly as possible. Many of them can be evolved with secondary perks to aid Amara in close quarters combat, like keeping her elemental arms out to deflect bullets, or extend the reach and power of her melee attack. As Amara, you're always charging forward, as her power attack grows when closer to an enemy. So if you pick Amara, you'll always want to be surrounded. This requires good spatial awareness. There's a lot to account for when multiple enemies are hitting you from more than one direction. Shotguns and close-range pistols are your best friends. If you enjoy tossing grenades and sniping enemies from a distance, then Amara is not for you. Amara is a bit more difficult to use in comparison to her fellow Vault Hunters as a result of her emphasis on overwhelming her opponent with close quarters elemental damage. Some late game enemies and bosses can fly or have sturdy elemental resistances, both of which put Amara at a disadvantage. You may want to hold off on picking her for your first playthrough if this is your first Borderlands game. But if you think guns are silly, and you'd rather just punch every enemy to death, then look no further than Amara. Next up is Zane, who is a hit and run character and a grenade stacking maniac with the right Digiclone build. Unlike other Vault Hunters, he can use two skill trees at once. However, there is no reason to do so in your early playthrough due to the second skill taking the place of grenades. Oh, glorious grenades. Part of what makes Zane such an effective hit-and-run tactician has to do with his potential to explode everything in the immediate area and then instantly teleport out. This power comes from the Digiclone. Now entering the Clone Zone! The Digiclone is one of Zane's skill trees that allows him to summon a stationary copy of himself. Zane can swap places with the clone at any time, and even use the clone to revive from fight for your life state mid-tree. The clone can be used creatively to bound up a battlefield, fall back to reload, or simply as a distraction to draw fire. As Zane progresses down the tree, several abilities begin to vastly increase explosive power, such as Fractal Frags, where the clone throws a copy of your grenade. There is also Duct Tape Mod, where Zane will randomly fire a grenade, Binary System, which causes the clone to release a Cryonova when places are swapped, and Doppelbanger, where the clone explodes at the end of the skill timer. Combining these abilities with any grenade that has an MIRV trait, which splits into multiple munitions, or even better, one that splits into multiple Sticky Shock traps. Zane's biggest danger is actually himself. It's important to leave an area that's been blanketed with grenades, either by leaving the Digiclone behind, or with prodigious running. If you want a completely different Zane, one that posts up behind a barrier and sends out a drone to flush enemies from cover, then his other two skill trees, Barrier and Sentinel, make him into less of a solo build and more of a support team player. You can even pick up and move with his shield. But if you're looking for someone a little more hot-headed, Mose is perfect for series newcomers and highly recommended to those with an itchy trigger finger. On her own, she doesn't have much combat abilities, but when you jump into her Iron Bear mech, a world of possibility is available to you. The Iron Bear is only available for a limited time, but in that short duration, it's well capable of wiping out entire rooms of enemies. It starts with three weapons, the V-35 grenade launcher, the minigun, and the railgun. But that arsenal expands by investing in each of Moses' three skill trees, opening up options to equip other types of firepower, like a flamethrower and a rocket volley and each can also be customized with skills that modify their capabilities. The Iron Bear can be used in a variety of strategic ways. You can summon it frequently to rain down everlasting hell upon your enemies, or you might just keep it as your ace in the hole during boss fights or when a firefight goes south. Heck, you can take both approaches. It's up to you.
Mose can also be useful as a tank, conceptually and literally for other players. After all, the Iron Bear is a near-invincible wall that can easily pull enemy aggro off teammates. None of this is to say that Mose isn't capable outside the mech. In fact, she's just as deadly on foot. Her skill tree has plenty of bonuses that amplify her capabilities, such as improved reload speed, bonus incendiary damage, and enhanced shield strength. Many of Moses' skills optimize her ability to inflict damage as aggressively as possible, while occasionally buffing teammates and even letting them hop aboard the Iron Bear's manned turret. As Moes, you are regularly switching between wiping out enemies on foot and devastating them with the Iron Bear. She's a scrappy, agile, and adaptable character whose most significant strength is stacking up a plethora of damage in a short time and taking the heat off friends. In many ways, Moes is essentially a Titanfall pilot without the wall running. So if that doesn't make you want to play as her, then we don't know what does. Now, Moes obviously works great when playing well with others, but say you want to play the game solo. Well, in that case, you'll want to go with Flak. Every Vault Hunter is perfectly viable to play with solo, but in many ways, Flak is designed around working by themselves. Instead of real friends, you can make up the difference with one of Flak's three pets. Not only do their kills count for getting a second chance if you're downed, but you can eventually invest in a passive skill that lets them straight up revive you. <laughs> real friends, who needs them? Each pet behaves differently and can be swapped around at any time, allowing for a lot of experimentation in which pet you prefer. The Master Tree is all about boosting the pets, but even if you don't spec in this tree, it's important to understand that Flax pets are a key part of their rhythm of play, and if you aren't using them all the time, then you aren't taking full advantage of what Flak can do. As for Flak themselves, there's a lot of DNA from previous Vault Hunters Mordecai and Zero in Flak's other skill trees. Fade Away lets you turn invisible for a short period, and Rack Attack throws out a group of racks to assault enemies. So yeah, if you like those characters, Flak will be very familiar to you. And also like those characters, Flak is best suited for long-range sniping. Their hunter skill tree is all about increasing crit damage. So if you like playing from a distance, using snipe rifles, and getting headshots, then Flak is for you. Jacob's guns, which are all about bolt-action precision damage, are gonna be your best friends. Flak is gonna work best for players that manage their pets along with their own skills and team up on enemies to take them out together. They may not be as visually flashy as the other Vault Hunters, but make no mistake, in the hands of a skilled player, Flak can dish out some serious damage. My one warning for picking Flak is that their pets do tend to walk in front of you during important emotional moments with characters, which can be annoying. We hope you found all this information helpful in deciding which Vault Hunter you want to roll with first. Once you've made your choice, why not watch our specific tips and build loadouts for each character, which are on the way. Thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great time with your chosen Vault Hunter.